anytime that you switch platforms, it's going to be a huge struggle. But I think, especially for us, this time was very difficult. What we had on the previous Uncharted games and on The Last of Us was written for the cell architecture and it was all optimized for that. But the PlayStation 4 just does things differently. The whole studio, like tools, everything, it's, it's a massive challenge to push content that now needs to fill like 8 gigs versus the 256 or 512 megs that were on the PS3. You have all this memory, you have all this uh, new processing power, so I knew that there would be a step up. I think I was surprised, and I think a lot of people in the studio were surprised by just how big that leap was going to be. First kind of starting, we asked the question of PlayStation 4, what can we do? And for me, there are always new things that there were still left to put in the game, like how do you put a vehicle in Uncharted and still make it Uncharted? Oh, this was really a great idea, Nate. Do you want to drive? Oh, you're doing just fine. It's been a challenge because we really want it to feel like the interaction is causing things to happen. So whenever it's driving over a dusty terrain, there's a lot of dust kick up. And then say you go into a muddy section, the effects are gonna communicate that too. If the tires spin out, then they're gonna kick up a lot of mud and the vehicle's gonna get muddy. And we just wanna have that connection between uh, this vehicle that you're controlling and the environment that you're in. Can we do the convoy sequence from Uncharted 2 and 3, but now I'm in control of that vehicle at the same time? And driving through a dense urban city, driving quickly, is quite a challenge because you're looking at all that geometry and all that complexity just flying by you, but you, you can't halfway do it because you'll know. Um, so we have to spend so much time thinking about people that are populating the scene, the signs in the scene, the vegetation in the scene. And even though that stuff's flying by, it's got to be convincing. We're trying to make the gameplay experience more rich by basically giving the player more choices. So we've added our rope mechanic, so that's not just a gimmick, like that's fully integrated into uh, uh, just about all of our, our gameplay encounters. Uh, obviously the rope has a huge effect on combat, so we've got melee moves that come out of rope, uh, using the rope to traverse the space to get an advantage, uh, either in open combat or in stealth. One thing I really appreciated that like Bruce kind of brought around from the beginning was, let's explore the meat and potatoes of this game again. Let's get back to just like what is the core gameplay of this. We know we're going to get the set pieces, we know we're going to have these big things, and we're going to push that as well but get back into our gut of like, what is Uncharted? What is the traversal gunplay? What we wanted to do with the combat is really push the, the things that are unique to Drake, the things that are unique to him as a character. Um, and one of the main things that Drake can do is just he has this amazing ability to traverse through the environment. The climbing system in Uncharted 4 has been completely overhauled. We've come up with a, a system that gives just an unprecedented amount of fine control over Drake as he climbs. You um, have full analog control over both of his hands to put his hand exactly on the rock, on the handhold where you want it to be, and fluidly go from, from one climb to another. We're also able to integrate Drake into the environment a lot more. When he's climbing on the outside of a vehicle, he's moving with that vehicle. Uh, with his weight on that vehicle on top of the animation. So it's something that the PlayStation 4 gives us that we have so much more memory. That tends to be our biggest constraint in animation is just trying to fit all this motion, all this animation in memory. In the past, for example, when you had uh, a character traversing with you, that character's traversal was scripted. Like once you moved here, they would move in these very specific ways. Now actually it's very systemic and both the, the enemies and your allies can view the terrain in kind of this 3D space. When you have big spaces and you have the mobility of Nathan Drake, you gotta have mobility within your AI. There's a lot of really nuanced decision making in terms of how, for example, how exposed an AI is as they're taking a flank route. They now have this like really complex knowledge of the exposure to the player's vision as they're taking a flank route. And they will kind of dynamically decide, okay, this is actually a better route because there's more cover along this route. We didn't want a game where you just sit behind one piece of cover and just 
you know, sitting there and, and the stop and pop, you're sitting there and shooting. We really wanted you to, to move through the environment, to outsmart them, to flank them, for them to be able to chase you around uh, and just have that constant motion. The enemies are smarter. We've taken a lot of the, the stealth uh, elements from The Last of Us and brought those in, so the player has more choices in combat. Uh, you can actually avoid an enemy, lose their line of sight, and just sneak past them and not even have to encounter them. Like it used to be that you're either in stealth or you're in combat. And now there's these kind of varying levels of stealth. Uh, they go into investigate when they think they've seen you, but they're not 100% sure. Uh, then they'll go into combat once they find you. And once they lose you after combat, they'll go into search where they'll kind of canvas the area looking for you. A lot of that scripting is still up to the designers, but we've given them so much better tools in order to, to achieve that. We always had contextual moves where you could slam guys into a wall and beat them up. Enemies are able to do that to you as well. You'll have uh, moves and kind of fight situations where two enemies are attacking you at once. It's not in like a scripted way. It can happen kind of in any combat encounter. There's a lot of new tools in the, in the player's disposal, but what's cool is that they're kind of added in this way that's elegant enough to not, you know, explode the game with HUD and all these like crazy options that are difficult to learn. It's very much that same kind of seamless, very smooth, uncharted experience where we get a lot of gameplay from relatively few mechanics. And having really gorgeous animations that feels very rooted and grounded, but at the same time gives you the responsiveness, you're gonna get to play this. We're showing off in a way of just like, look how gorgeous this can be. Look at what we can do. Look at the colors, look at the scenes, look at the environments that you're gonna get to explore, and you're gonna get to have that on this stick.